All right, here we go. So now we can actually have a proper look at some of the skills because a lot of these were blocked in the beta. So that's good. Let's have a look at the skills. So pulse. That's the scanner, yeah. That's what I liked in the first game. It, it kind of shows you where all the enemies are and it will give a buff usually. You can choose some different buffs. What's these variants? The remote is deployed, set location, and continuously pulses the nearby area for hostiles and visually highlights them on the agent's herd. I like that. Jammer. Jammer pulses outwards, overloading and disrupting hostiles. Electronics, that's cool. All right. Turret, we all know what the turret is. We use that uh, plenty of times before. It's a standard turret, the incinerator, which is really handy to add that kind of uh oh, what's what do they call it again um uh, status that's it a status effect flaming status effect on enemies which means they wouldn't normally shoot you they'd try and put the fire out to give you an opportunity to shoot that was really good but the new sniper variant which is really cool uh you're able to select enemies that you can snipe by using the, the shoulder buttons or um r1 or l1 i think it is on the controller uh, which is quite cool. I tried that out in the beta. The hive, another new thing. Let's have a look at what this is. Store a hive sends out micro repair drones that expend themselves to repair allies' armor. That's another thing in this that I mentioned in the beta impressions. It's armor plating now that you replenish, uh, not actual like kind of health stim packs you inject yourself with. So I like that idea that it's a little bit more realistic that once you've been your armor's been shot a few times, you have to replace the plates. The Stinger Hive sends out micro drones that attack and distract nearby enemies. I like that, that's cool. Reviver Hive, small drones that revive nearby downed alloy allies. Okay, that's cool. So that's a reviver. It's a little bit like kind of like the health box, and that's why I call it the health box from the first game. Um I've, <laughs> I know there's an official name for it, I can't remember what that is. A booster. Booster hive delivers a stimulant to nearby allies that increase their combat efficiency. Yeah. Okay, cool. Chem launcher, another new skill. Reinforce cannon to disperse a cloud of gas that repairs and reinforces the agent. Allies armor. Fire starter. You shoot the gas. Yeah. Right foe. Now this is really fun. I like this. You can stick the enemies to the floor with foam. That's likely to be really useful against enemies that are going to charge you. So the charger type enemies, the ones with the shotguns or the ones with the melee weapons. But maybe more to do with the heavies, the heavy enemies that are going to just slowly walk towards you and you know try and lock you down. Potentially that right foam is going to come in really handy for that to slow them down a little bit. Oxidizer releases a cloud of corrosive gas that damages enemy armor. Awesome. I like the sound of that. That sounds really good. The shield, yeah, again, we all know what the right shield does. Let's see if there's any new variations to it. A lighter shield that allows all primary weapons to be used. Okay, that's good, because before the shield you could only use a secondary weapon, or well, say secondary weapon, like a kind of handgun, uh, or the guns you hold in one hand, like small SMGs. Deflector shield, incoming bullets to be ricocheted. Okay, that's cool. I like that. The drone, something we've been waiting for since the first one was really teased in the E3 trailer for the first Division game. Never made the final cut, which was disappointing. We've got it now. You can pretty much bug enemies with it. We can also use it to defend by the looks of it. And I know there's a way of being able to um, replenish nearby allies' armour and also drop kind of bombs within a certain area because that was available in the beta. But that's also cool. Seeker Mine... We all know that from the first game, which is also really cool. Airburst, Cluster. Uh, again, something new that they've introduced to these is you can actually choose now the enemy that you want it to attack by pressing L1 or R2 on the controller. Um, you will get kind of like a, a little icon pop-up next to the enemy that will show you how you can use that. Firefly. This looks like the Seeker drone almost from Call of Duty. It's a lot smaller by the looks of it. 
blinds enemies as it passes over, causing them to be unable to function in uh, full combat. So it's almost like a flash grenade then to a certain extent. Burst, Firefly. So by the looks of it, you can choose multiple targets, which is quite handy. It'll fly across multiple targets. I like that. That's quite clever. Destroys enemies' weak points. Again, damaging weak points means that these enemies, you can then focus fire on the weak spot. That's going to come in real handy again with more heavy enemies so they don't kind of sponge all your bullets. But decisions, decisions. Which one do I unlock first? Because there's some exciting new ones there. I reckon... I'm going to go with the drone. We get to choose which one we unlock first, though, out of all the different variations. Let's just go with the striker variant. I like that. Okay, let's have a look at perks. Now, again, perks are a lot different in this. Okay, if we. Get rid of the tutorial uh, information. Perks, okay. Pick up perks to immediately gain its benefits. Okay, that's fine. Is it only going to let me choose one at the moment? Yeah, second weapon. That's cool. Uh, it would help if I actually held down the button for the full duration, though, to unlock it. Okay, let's scroll through and see what other things we've got. Restock. Armor kits, restocking when entering a safe space, refills all armor kits, and you can upgrade that by looks of it to restock grenades. Oh. Build proficiency cash, 50% chance for bonus items to drop when open and fill proficiency cash. That's going to be nice because you tend to find that usually when you open the fill proficiency caches from the division, the first division, they're always rubbish stuff once you got to the end game. Armour kit, that's another important one. You can carry more armour kit, so potentially more health to a certain extent. I like this as well, how you can increase your XP earned from, say, getting headshots and killing multiple enemies at the same time, things like that really help towards um, ranking up. Um, you just noticed there that I just got a backup request. That's something else that you get. Someone who's requested backup, you can literally just join them on the fly without having to connect to matchmaking and stuff like that. I really like that. That's cool. It's a cool little feature. Increase your stash storage capacity. That's cool. I'm glad they've not hidden that behind a paywall where you have to pay to increase your stash. Inventory slots, small grenades. Donate enough resources to the control points to activate some better Protection of loot containers, so there's loot containers we can find in the world. That's good to know. Crafting materials, more storage for crafting materials. Increase magazines that you can hold. Muzzles, awards allowed, vent break, muzzle. So resources are still in the game. Food, drink, that sort of thing. You can carry 50 more food, water and components. Uh, I haven't looked into yet what the buffs are for the resources, but I'm sure they'll be similar to the first game uh, that will give you enhanced. I think the, the tin food used to allow you to um, heal, um, so you'd recover health. In this, like I said, it's armor you recover, not health. So once your armor's gone, your health goes down. You can replenish your armor with the armor packs, but you can't replenish your health. So maybe eating the food will re replenish the health, but I'm yet to see that. So don't quote me on that, but that sounds more logical. Deconstruction can yield extra crafting materials. That's good to know because we want to. Crafting materials are a big thing in this, so you want to be able to craft attachments and which increase the damage and certain attributes of your weapons once you got the blueprint like in the first one you used to be able to create high-end gear and sometimes some of the stats on them were really good and um, hopefully you'll be able to do the similar thing in this i'm sure you will this is a bit odd how you awards micro red dot that fits short and long range rails maybe you don't pick up optics and uh, kind of like attachments for your weapons they're not used to. Maybe you have to open a skill to be able to unlock that. Usually, I kind of look how it's looking. 
Signature weapon ammo. So as you know, that'll be... Actually, saying that signature weapon is something you get in the end game. Like when I was playing the beta, you get like the crossbow. Um, increases the amount of signature weapon ammo. So that's going to be things like the explosive crossbow bolts and stuff, I think, by the looks of it. A new equipment loadout can now be created in the inventory. Uh, loadouts are always good. You can set up different loadouts for different scenarios. I do like that. And hard bounties get access to one hard difficulty bounty per day. So there's the perks then. 